Hi, this is an update of the Stretchla project. The Stretchla project is the combination of a Volkswagen Vanagon camper with the remains of a wrecked Tesla Model S to make an all-electric camper. I'm Otmar, and today we'll be talking about a few things. Um, the drawbacks of trying to save money and, uh, and the benefits with buying used parts and that sort of thing. Uh, other things that make me feel like I'm not making as much progress on the project as I'd like to. And, uh, and the fun stuff, the front suspension. What it takes to make it fit, what the problems are, what the challenges are, that sort of thing. All right, so first off, our current challenge, the next step is to get the wreck Tesla running well enough to be legal on the road to test the systems, get rid of the error codes, make all the subsystems work. I'd rather do that on the original Tesla, which is still easier to fix than changing all the systems, moving them into Vanagon, and then trying to diagnose them. Um, the progress on that, you know, it, uh, it could have been pretty quick if I just spent a lot of money on it, um, but I'm being a little cheap. Those of you who, uh, who have s watched my written blog saw that the last update was about the, the costs of doing this. So we're looking at uh, more than $8,000 worth of parts in order to get this just running. That's no body parts, nothing pretty, uh, just to get it functioning relatively well on the road. Uh, in trying to avoid that, I'm looking for ways to get around it, uh, as is typical. One of the major expenses is the steering rack, which had its cast knobs broken off. You know, the mounting threaded sections there are broken off. Uh, with a bunch of research and with friends looking on the internet, uh, we've discovered that it looks very likely, even the casting numbers match, that this is the same aluminum housing that's used in the last few years of Land Rover Evoque right-hand drive vehicles. So I've been scouring uh, eBay in, the, in England to try to find a, a used part. And there's been a couple that I missed uh, just barely on time. And then there were a couple later that were much more expensive. And uh, so with looking and waiting and negotiating, and now finally I've, uh, I've uh, bought one that with shipping should come in a little, well, around 700 US. Um, that, of course, is a risk in itself. When it gets here, we'll see if it actually fits. Uh, my plan is to take all the guts out of the Tesla rack, all the electronics, all that stuff, which I've already taken apart, and put them in with this new housing that's all uh, whole, that has good mounts. Uh, there's a risk that maybe the electronics don't recalibrate right where they should have been. Um, but I'm trying to keep things pretty well aligned where they are, so hopefully, hopefully that'll work. Uh, but that's definitely, I feel like I've been kind of spinning my wheels, uh, not making a lot of progress while I try to look at all these expensive parts and try to find a way to get them cheaper. I haven't seen a single wrecked Tesla being parted out. So, Normally one might go to a junkyard, but this car is just too new for that. There's not enough of them out there um, So yeah, pretty soon I'm gonna give up and just start spending money uh, But if this steering rack comes in and you know that saves me over two thousand dollars that that's a pretty big deal uh, There's a bunch of other parts the front steering knuckle you can see how the tops broken off on that one the uh, the air spring for the air suspension, that one got broken in half in the accident and pretty smashed up. So I'll have to replace that. Uh, the lower control arms, things like that. I don't expect to see any, uh, any better deals coming along uh, unless we find a wreck that's being parted out. So those I think I'm just going to have to buckle down and, and buy from Tesla and well that'll be alright too. Um, there are a, there's another category of parts, and that is things like the, the active louvers, louvers that regulate the airflow into the radiators. Uh, I'm getting a lot of error codes related to that cooling system because they're completely missing. Uh, I didn't even get the broken parts when I got the car. And so I figure if I could find some louvers that are 
cracked, scratched, broken, whatever, they would at least calm down the error codes and satisfy the system. Uh, similarly, something like the left side air conditioning condenser, I just need one that, that holds, holds gas in it. Uh, a fan, uh, fan controller less likely. But some of these parts, I imagine um, there's probably Tesla body shops throwing them away regularly because they get scratched, a little bit cracked, a little broken, and of course they have to be replaced with new ones. So um, if any of you know of a Tesla body shop that you're good terms with, friends of yours, who may be willing to support the project by giving us extra parts, um, I'd be real happy to pay shipping and some time for them to pack it or whatever. Uh, maybe end up saving me one or two thousand dollars on the whole project. And if not, well, I'll just have to address that uh, as time goes on. But I'd, uh, I'd like to see, I'd like to start making progress a little faster, so uh, I'm going to start pushing a bit. Uh, the tires and wheels. Uh, two of the wheels were damaged on this car. Uh, I also want to have at least one spare, if not two. Uh, this car has the Goodyear tires, which as I understand are good, but the Michelin tires are supposed to be better and lower rolling resistance. So I've been looking, and uh, I think I've located a set of four Michelin tires takeoffs with the Tesla wheels uh, for a decent price. And uh, I have a friend who's now uh, Lowell Simmons. Thank you for uh, looking into that and trying to get them and, uh, and ship them to me. So that's some progress. That's kind of fun. Uh, otherwise, well, there's, there's more to life than just the Tesla project. I've been uh, making a little bit of progress on uh, new code for the hairball. This is part of a Zilla motor controller that I developed. Um, my friend Hayu and I have been working on, uh, mostly he has, and I just advise him, working on a uh, tri-Zilla three-phase high horsepower controller. And so that takes some time, but it's a lot of fun. Um, but it, I feel like I haven't made a lot of progress on the stretch line. And I, I look back and I see, well, that's part of it. Mostly it's hours spending searching eBay and various online and trying to find parts for less money. And it's just it's kind of an uphill battle with, uh, with such a new car. So on to the fun stuff, the uh, front suspension. So you can see here, um, I, my intention is to put the whole Tesla suspension, tires, wheels, brakes, the whole setup under the van. And initially you look at that and you say, oh, that's, that's not that hard. Cut a big hole, put in some framework, make it all adapt. Um, when you actually have the two cars sitting next to you and you pull out your, your metric tape measure and start measuring things and, and uh, making one-tenth scale drawings and measuring all kinds of stuff and I like to take pictures with a tape measure in the picture, and then I'll, I'll sketch up dimensions and critical dimensions and things like that to see it. Uh, alignment specifications to get stock ride heights. Um, so there's a lot of very simple math here, um, figuring out the heights of all the various parts. Mostly it's in the vertical axis that I'm running into to issues here. And that is that uh, we start with a <clears throat> stock 15 inch wheel on a Vanagon that comes out about 24 inches on the outside and we switch to a 19 inch wheel on, from the Tesla uh, which besides being a little farther out wider uh, is uh, almost four inches larger in diameter so there's an absolute limit that when you bottom out the suspension that wheel can't go through the fender that we have there Ideally, I'd like the van body to sit as low as possible on the highway for aerodynamics. I'd like the ground clearance to be as high as possible for clearance off-road and that sort of thing, and also for aerodynamics. And I'd like to avoid raising the seating position any. Uh, this one is already slightly higher than stock, and I notice it, and I'd rather not go any higher. I intend to put the Tesla seats in there, as well as the dashboard. And I love the Tesla seats. They feel really good, all these adjustable lumbar supports, uh, all that sort of thing. But they are about 10 millimeters higher from the seat rail to the seating position. So there's a little bit lost there. And then there's some major interference with the 
uh, upper control arm on the Tesla and the air strut top. These are things that were never designed for to go into a van where you're sitting on top of them. So they designed the suspension to optimize the handling and the performance and the weight efficiency. Uh, it tends to make for a really tight fit uh, between the seat rail and the bottom of the subframe that holds the lower control arms. We're looking at about, I think, 660 millimeters of distance there. And no matter how you, how you run it, you hold that tape measure up, you look at it, and if you don't lower the seat, I mean, I'm sorry, if you don't raise the seat, your bottom of your control arms and all that is all about, about 50 millimeters lower than this suspension here, which is the four-wheel drive uh, jacked up high clearance suspension. So in the end, um, I guess I have to give up some of my ideals and uh, run the body height a little higher than I had hoped. Uh, just to, to make it all fit without going into a massive redesign of the front suspension, which is beyond me. And, uh, well, you know, we'll run it as, it as it goes. So a number of people have asked me, why not just use the suspension off the van again? The original one, it fits, it works, there's clearance. I could adapt the motor to fit inside it and that sort of thing. And although that's a possibility, there's a few reasons. Uh, why I'm avoiding that. Um, the weight rating of the Tesla suspension, the axle rating is actually higher than the Vanagon rating. Uh, I'll be exceeding it some, uh, but I'd like to start with a higher number just at the beginning. The, um, the Tesla has air suspension, and I've owned a car with air suspension before, and I really like that. This, um, what do we call it, the uh, smart air suspension. Um, really smooth ride, adjusts heights. If it, it remembers where you were using a high height and goes back to it, uh, that's, that's a pretty cool feature. My last car with air suspension, uh, when I took that on washboard dirt roads, what a smooth ride it was. It was really good. Since this will see occasional washboard dirt roads, but when I'm on them, it's usually for a couple hours at a time, uh, I think that's worth quite a bit. So that's worth some effort. Um, the other thing is the brakes. Have you seen the brakes on a Tesla? I mean, look at these things. They are monsters. Got those, those big Brembo calipers, the huge ventilated discs. They are, geez, they're almost as big as the, the wheel on the, on the Vanagon. So I had upgraded the brakes on the Vanagon to these ventilated South African disc brakes, and they, I thought they were big, but they're nothing compared to these Tesla brakes. So that contributes a lot to safety, you know, great braking, that's a good thing. Um, so that's worth something in itself. Speaking of the brakes, um, the Tesla has ABS, and that's, you find that on any modern car, the Vanagon does not have that. Um, the Tesla also has regenerative braking, and it's not safe, and the Tesla won't allow you to use regenerative braking if your ABS system is not functioning properly. I really want regenerative braking on this vehicle because it's big, it's heavy, and it's going to drive in the mountains. Uh, it'll be worth having. So without uh, ABS, if your regenerative braking came on so strong to cause the wheels to slide, there would be nothing to stop it from sliding and it would be a real safety problem. So with the ABS, as soon as the ABS kicks in, the motor controller can respond and reduce the regenerative braking so that the braking system can handle that and maintain the traction. Um, so that's another reason to keep the, uh, the air suspension in that, in that setup. So that's most of it, I think. Um, yeah, just spent a lot of time with, uh, with scale drawings, rulers, cameras, tape measures, a whole lot of head scratching, and uh, it's, it's been fun. Um, but I, I'm getting a little antsy to make some progress. I'd really like to get this Tesla on the road soon so I can start taking it apart and, uh, and putting the parts under the van again. Um, lastly, I want to send a shout out to Nikki at Transport Evolved. The other day she uh, reminded me that we should all be wearing these wonderful 
wonderful t-shirts that say, I void warranties. I think that's just as appropriate as can be. Uh, I had a lot of fun being on her show the other day, and, uh, and that was really great. Um, that's it for today, and we'll see you next time.